atmosphere like just to see it? It was cool. It was nice. Um, uh, I don't know. I'll probably think about it later. Probably when I watch the game, I'm still in game mode trying to run plays back in my head. But it was, the environment was cool. Even better to have my son and my brother sitting close side. Uh, and then James is obviously the hard thing. He's being asked to do a lot uh, this Clippers team offensively. Um, what have you seen just out of him and his, him and his ability to still be that you know that three level guy, um, just playing a high level stuff. Um, I don't know, I thought we did pretty good on Jage, you know, for most of the game. He got it going right there towards the end. But uh, I'm sure, you know, they're excited to get Kawhi back at some point, but uh, Norman been hoping to. Hey, Chris. Um, what's been your approach with one And Have you noticed a change in the years that you've been in the league with how the so-called old hats mentor? Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, sometimes when I take the time to think about it, but I think right now I'm still processing the game. You know, these guys, they, they on their own paths. You know, I try to be there uh, as much as I can, you know. Uh, but I don't know. Um, guys are, are really elite, especially like Vic. And he's figuring it out as we go. He's Everybody, I've never played with a guy like him. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm figuring it out too. Chris, on that note, it's, it's early, but what sort of chemistry do you think you have been able to establish so far? Um, we, we, we're figuring it out. Uh, both of us didn't play with so many um, preseason games. You guys have been around a long time, know that preseason is a lot shorter. <laughs> Training camp used to be a month long. Right, so we sort of figuring it out as we go. The league changes, traditional bigs, switching one through five. Um, he never played with probably a guard like me, you know what I mean, who's constantly, you know, doing different things. Um, so I've never played for a center that I set screens for. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's different. Chris, you heard from I think we, uh, I think one of our coaches told me today that we're third in defense right now. We were before this game. Uh, so I think the first thing going into a locker room like ours is just making sure the guys believe that we can be really good. You know, it's, I tell them all the time because they're such great guys, but I, I can't fathom 22 wins, right? And so when you go through things like that, um, where these guys work hard and practice and try every day and you know, don't see the wins, you know, that, that stuff can get pretty routine where you're just like, it's never enough. And so we're gonna, we gonna keep building and make sure they know they're going in every game, you know, we can win and they see it because of how, how we started out. Chris, your point earlier, no, this is a unique <coughs> team and one is a unique player, but given your accomplished career in so many different times, what have been your, what's been your approach with trying to get the best out of the team and establish chemistry and challenge them overall? Um, yeah, the first thing I say in any of these situations you're going to, you got to show guys that you can hoop. Yeah. I don't go in there trying to be nobody's coach, nobody's daddy. Now, the first and foremost, I hoop. You know what I mean? And so you have to ask them guys what it's like. <laughs> Seriously, like I don't, you can't tell somebody, they want to see it. <laughs> You know, like the younger generation, like they, a lot of them, Vic even said he didn't, he don't remember me from New Orleans. He only saw me play when I was with the Clippers and I don't know how old he was. So all that, what they used to do, what they do, they want to see what you do now, right? So that's why I train and I work the way that I work. Cause you can tell them all you want to tell them, but, but they want to see it. So any advice to anybody is you better show them what you can do if you're going to try to teach them something. Just do more more so we can get to see his family. But, but even, even just follow up on this, some of your stature has been so accomplished in the league, do you still feel like you have to go out there first and foremost? Absolutely. 
it's a, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> you know what I mean? Seriously, I, I mean, y'all know. I, because we did the countdown stuff and they was killing JT. And that man won the final. He won the NBA championship and they still trying to figure out what he, what he did wrong. You know what I mean? So once you accept that, that you have to show up every day, right? It's not about what you did in the last game, what you did last year. You got to show up every day. Got it. Big Chris. Half stepped up uh, their physicality. They made shots too. But yeah, we played good basketball. We didn't play our, our best. This how it is. It's a, uh, I mean, it's a matter. Of, I think what, when we get a lead like this, we don't need to take as many risks. You know, it's a matter of going back to our uh, our basics and knowing what our basics are. It comes with, of course, uh, experience um, and time spent together. You know, on the court. So uh, they, uh, you know, they have that that edge on us in terms of experience and knowing how to handle this, this type of situation situations. It sounds like it's going to be. I mean, uh, of course. I mean, of course, we all miss him. You know, we hope he's uh, he's all right. We know he's gonna he's gonna come back. We know he's gonna want to come back earlier than probably should, but you know that's pop. Uh, you know, even if he's uh, he's not with us right now, we we, we still feel uh, we still try to apply what he he's been trying to you know to, to teach us, and Mitch is doing a great job at you know. Uh, Putting, putting in the coaching his own personality too, and uh, pushing us in, in his own way, you know. Uh, so, yeah, we just, of course, we, we all, we all want to see Pop back, but it's, uh, it's our job to, to apply regardless of the conditions right now. And you have to talk to him about it. Uh, no. natural course of things, you know, some guys, uh, I mean, some guys get better, some others are, uh, you know, past their prime, it's the nat natural course of things, so I don't, I didn't notice anything different than, uh, you know, from watching the NBA from the last 10 years, we've seen stars coming up, some uh, leaving, it's, it's just high goals, I think. Thank you, Rizzo, but what sort of chemistry do you think you've been able to establish so far this season? Um, I mean, uh, I think we we share a lot of uh, similarities in our view of basketball. So it's uh, so we now it's just I'm just trying to apply. You know, um, I mean, the, I mean, I think the biggest thing is his knowledge of the pick and roll. You know, so I'm just trying to apply what he what he sees and the experiment. Also, I'm telling him what I like, but at the same time, you know, he's telling me also what he likes, what we don't like. So it's a, it's a, I think it's a very healthy uh, relationship because we, we see basketball pretty much the same way. What, uh, what major pieces of feedback advice has given you so far? 
I mean, many, many, you know, not on basketball, but also on the, you know, the life as an NBA player, the, the mistakes commonly made. So it's a, it's a, it's a lot of things. Victor, talk about it as far as coming into the Intuit Dome. What were your impressions of the arena itself in the crowd? <sighs> I mean, my impressions were really in a really nice locker room, of course. Really long uh, uh, hallway. <laughs> <laughs> really long hallway. Yeah, I think I think it's a beautiful arena. What are your thoughts for the team this year? Goals and aspirations. What do you think you guys can achieve playoff um, with the addition of Chris Paul? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think uh, the playoffs is still something that's uh, unknown to me. So it's. Uh, Definitely, I definitely want to want to reach them and you know experiment because it's uh, you know I think it's the next step in uh, in our uh, our whole development as a team. What's your mindset when you come out and you miss a handful of threes in a row? Is it just keep shooting, or is it to try to get yourself going in other ways first? Um, it's just to keep you know playing my game and uh, my game consists of shooting threes too, so I'm just going to, if I'm open, I'm just going to keep shooting them, you know, so hey. I'm, I'm going to make them. How, how much pressure do you put on yourself? Going back to what the young lady said about being a superstar, we saw all these jerseys with your name on them, more jerseys than we saw flipper jerseys. Yeah, really? Yeah, really. So how much pressure do you put on yourself when you come out there every night? Um, I mean... You know, of course, it's um, it depends on the the game, depends on the momentum of the team. Uh, I think it would be a lie to say there's zero, you know, zero pressure or zero, you know, feeling of responsibility. But it's uh, for me, it's nothing, um, nothing unhealthy, you know, because before every game, I remind myself that you know I'm very, very lucky to be here, to have this as a job, uh, and that. You know, I mean, all these, all these people wearing my jersey, it's not, I don't feel like I got to, I got, you know, to do something different to, to, to so they have fun. Or I think they, you know, think they're going to have fun if I have fun. So whoever, you know, when you go out to play, you don't, don't think about any pressure. Sorry, guys, yeah. we only got time for one you more. We got to take the fun thing. You mentioned earlier um, Mitch putting his own, coaching with his own personality. How would you describe that? Um, so of course it's a, it's a, so it's a bunch of of course uh, tactics, but also um, you know he's got a, everybody in the coaching staff. I think this is something I've noticed in the league. This dynamics, everybody has their own uh, <clears throat> their own personality. Everybody's closer to somebody, you know, and uh, they know. Uh, so it, it allows them to know how to push them better, maybe, or how to use the right words. So. Um, I think it's uh it's just a personality thing, you know. We get we get different things from uh, from Mitch, and uh, because uh, I mean, yeah, his experience, his experience is different from uh, from anybody else. So it's uh for me, he's got a lot to he can he helps us a lot because he it can what he says can touch us in a, another way. One from from Robin in French. Sorry. Ça a commencé la saison, je sais plus. Honnêtement, je sais pas comment c'est. Si tu parles encore à qui est dans le potentiel Ouais, ouais. Bah, Maxime, ça, ça date, ça remonte à 7, 7 8 ans. Ouais, non, un peu plus, peut-être 8, 9 ans. Euh, la première fois que j'ai joué contre lui, lui c'était à lui jouait à Charenton, à Nanterre. Et euh, donc c'était seulement mon adversaire pendant un moment. Et puis euh, en 2020, il, est, il, est, il, a, il a rejoint Nanterre. Donc on a, donc on a passé un, un long moment ensemble parce qu'on était à la fois on s'entraînait ensemble l'été et puis on, on était les deux jeunes qui s'entraînaient avec les pros aussi. Donc euh, donc c'est à partir de ce moment-là que c'est devenu vraiment, vraiment mon ami très proche. Et euh, voilà, franchement, ce serait incroyable de, voir, de le voir dans, dans la Ligue. Pour moi, ce serait une immense fierté 
je sais qu'il qu a totalement la capacité et qu'il va tout bousiller aussi cette année. Merci. Thank you, Victor. Our locker room is open. Chris